Welcome to the third video on painting the motorcycle fuel tank. Of course, if you want to see the rest of the restoration on that bike, it's an XL250 and there's a, a whole series devoted to that as well. There's also a CB750 we're doing if you're a bike freak and a couple of cars as well. And I'll, I've got them all sort of arranged into playlists on the channel now. Oh, what are we doing in this one? We're filling plastics and painting plastics and painting the fuel tank. I'm looking at it now. I'm pretty happy with it. A lot of the stuff that I shot in this, I actually ended up redoing. I wasn't happy with the line on the fuel tank. Um, uh, and at the end of the video, you'll see the fuel tank painted, but there's a bad line at the front on the left-hand side. And so I ended up redoing that as well. So a lot of things, and even the front guard, it looked great in primer, and it's, it was one or two little imperfections I wasn't worried about because it's plastic and all that sort of stuff. It's an old bike. Ended up redoing it. So I did it because when I put the paint down, I just wasn't happy with it. So a lot of what you see in this, and I'll, you'll, you'll see in the next one when it's all finished, that some of those things have been corrected. Uh, bit of a bit of a spoiler, this stuff, I've done the glittering, and you can see how easily that falls out of solution. That's the silver glitter. It's absolutely gorgeous. But I'm not going to tell you what we do with it. And of course, here's another teaser for you. Now, a headline. And of course, the black... When you put the black down, it's almost a satiny sort of colour. This is just clear with a flex aid in it because it's a plastic part. And, uh, sorry, plastic does move around. But you can see it's a stunning piece indeed. So I'll move that to a safer spot uh, in a moment when I'm finished speaking. So uh, ooh, what is there? There's one more after this. In the next video after this one, we will be basically finishing everything doing the clear coats, doing the glitter, and using the two-pack clear on the tank. And then after that we can relax, because basically then the bike goes together and it's pretty much finished. So I hope you enjoy. Um, this bumper here, I need to mark up and fill. Of course, the other thing which we talked about briefly is these areas here that need to be filled. Now I've wrapped this back with 80 and got all the sort of excess nonsense off there. And I've come up with this, um, a plastic bumper filler. This is, again is from Nelson Infantry Gully. Now I've been through, with a magnifying glass and I can't see a bloody thing, and I've been through all of this. There's about 15 different languages there. Then realised the instructions were on the lid. <laughs> so it's just the same sort of thing. Um, it's an adhesive and filler. Easy sounding, no clogging, da 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 da. So it has a bunch of, like a little applicator, which looks like a postage stamp, it's tiny. Um, that's cool, and it's got its hardener, which is probably the same type of hardener everything else uses, I'm not sure. It's just an activator. Um, but of course, on the top of it, here, is a bunch of hieroglyphics, which are little signs. Um, wipe things clean, that obviously means. 100 to 2, well it's 50 to 1, the same as normal bog or filler. Uh, what is that? 4... You get 4 to 8 minutes of applying time before it starts going off. It's fully off in 25 minutes, and you can sand it with 80 to 320, da 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 and it goes on and on. So, the consensus is this. We're going to use this stuff to fill that. Yes? And also that front bumper. Oh, bumper. What do you call it? My God. This thing here, I'm not going to need to fill, I don't think. It's a little bit rough there. Maybe a little bit there. I'm not too sure. I'm not overly phased with this because I'll just cover the sticker anyway, but... So we need a little bit perhaps for that. I haven't done the other one yet because I've been slack and lazy, which is the reason I'm relatively fat. Now, so what we need to do is start mixing this up now. Um, I've decided to go with this. Now, normally you can use a flex aid in your... Can we see that? I've got it in frame. In your primer and colour and all that sort of stuff. This is a proper plastic. Fl it's just in a rattle can. I'm going to go with this. This is what I've been recommended. It's dear, it's 23 bucks for a can. Um, but we're not going to use a terrible amount of that. We're just going to use a bit just to go over that. Of course, we have to put the flex aid, because we're using a gun to paint the silver, we have to put the flex aid in the colour. Now, your first coat of clear, of course, I'm not using the 2K clear on this. I'm going to use acrylic clear on it, because I have heard of adhesion problem, not adhesion, going off problems with the flex aid that I've got on 2K paints. So, on 2K clears. That could be down to the fact that it's not mixed properly, because if it's mixed, um, if you don't mix enough of it, they, the product can still crack, the paint can still crack. If you mix too much, you have adhesion issues, and also, obviously, drying time, that sort of stuff. Uh, a flex aid is imperative, because this little guy here is gonna flex all over the world. 
So we need to get that right. So in the meantime, I think what I'll do is I'll clean this mess up a little bit and I'll start filling in these bits. Uh, in the, I also want to find the ends of the cracks in this. And it looked fairly cracked, but it also looks fairly good. There's, there's one that sort of comes down here and then ends. I'm going to drill a hole through that um, just to make sure the crack doesn't spread any further than what it already has. But <sighs> I think we'll be good. Respirator, because this is an old 3M1, it's knackered. I've got to get a new one. The elastic's all gone. Rubber here. It does seem to cover my face quite well, though. These cartridges, are you, they come with a date on them. Um, every 12 months you're supposed to um, replace them. These are a couple of years out of date, so I need new ones. I've actually ordered another mask. And they just query where they go. Going like this somehow. And they're snapping the position. They actually rotate like a light bulb is I'm not doing a lot of sanding at one time. I'm sort of getting sick of it and going inside and then coming out doing all. These things are replaceable, that's had it, um, with new pads. So we can just bang new ones in, give us some extra protection. And of course they just go over. And they're more for particulate where the other thing, the charcoal inside these is for vapor. And whatever you do, you get a better work here than me. I'm a slob. Um, there we go, that can go in like so. These aren't dear, they're very cheap. I think there's only two left in that box. But um, make sure you get them because you can see how much stuff we've inhaled and how much has been held up in here. So they do do quite a good job and you don't bother cleaning, we just chuck them out. <laughs> yes. Right. Actually, Dave likes when I say right like that because. Um, it's the sort of thing Big Clive does. He always says, right. <laughs> Some guy actually accused me of speaking like Musty One when I was talking about patina. And um, if you watch Antiques Roadshow and you can stay awake through it, which is an achievement in itself, well, you do hear a lot of uh, reference to original patinas and stuff like that. I was talking about the um, Victor, the Motormile. They've got completely different accents, but um, I don't think I said anything like him. He sort of, um, hey guys, how does he do it? Hey guys. Yeah, he does say he goes, hey guys. <laughs> At the start of his videos, hey guys. I don't do that. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about this. We have this ready to fill, kind of. Where's my brush? I need to brush it off. Here's my brush underneath it. Hey guys. So, we just brush that off. We could, should use prep salt. Um, also, the crack. What I've done with the cracks, I've drilled the end of it, then I've dug it out with a razor blade. And so I can, that's a channel, so I can fill that. Some of these marks in here are casting marks, or at least molding marks. And the, when you use a bit of wet and dry, it's just a bit of 120, and rub over them, they completely disappear. So we don't bother filling those. This is much better than I thought it was. I thought this was worse than that. But anyhow, we can stop talking and get down to action, because that's why you're watching this crap, right? Now, oh, one more thing. What I've done is... I've got a lid of an ice cream container. I'm going to stick some of this filler in there, give it a squeeze. You can see the ice cream. It was nice ice cream. It was really creamy. We can squeeze that together. When it goes off, if it just falls off, well, yeah. That's sort of really crappy plastic. So what do you do? Uh, right, so i just make sure it's clean, which it is sort of. Go away. Right, so let's open this up. Hey, what do you think? Um, if I can get my screw stick, no, my can opener in there. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at this. Are you ready for a surprise? Are you ready? Is the suspense building? I haven't got a drum roll machine. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm just going to shut this garage door because there's leaves going around. <sighs> Let me get a stirring stick for that. Oh, okay, so I've stirred this up. I thought the camera's on, I was wrong. Put a bit on here. It's a different makeup to standard film anyhow, which is why it's sort of shiny, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I've spilt this. It's got this sort of really sticky juice that comes out of it. So wipe that off. We're good. Okay, so we need one part in 50, which is the standard sort of. I bet if I look at the ingredients, it's going to be the same as the other stuff. So I'm just going to put that much there. And stir him up, and we're good to go. So let's move that out of the way. That's probably too much hardener or activator. And we just bang it in here, eh? 
into this really obscure shape. I'm just going to get another spatula. Hang on a minute. Like minutes kind of video or something? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, so they're just looking at clawing back some dosh. That's all it is. Exactly. Which is, I reckon, pretty, pretty bad. Because a lot of people, they work hard on the videos. I mean, I don't really, on my videos, I just turn the camera on and talk anyway. Like, I don't put an awful lot. You look at Mum's friend, the spinner, she puts a hell of a lot into hers. Right. I just shot a whole segment and the camera was not. I keep doing things like that, so I'm going to do it again. Here is the front guard. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in there. No, I'm not leaving that in there. Yes. No. Yes. No. I did yes. a sniff and you can hear a big bit of snot, so I'm not going to leave it in there. Anyway. Leave it in. No. Yes. So what we've got here has got the front guard off the XL. Now this thing was scratched to the nines, and you can see how deep some of these scratches are. Now you can get rid of all these scratches with 80 grit, but it's going to make it terribly, terribly thin, which means it's going to flex more, and paint's going to crack, and it's just going to be a pain in the neck. I fit this. I fit this with a flexible filler, so those bits that are too deep, you can see it's smooth. I can't even feel that. Um, hit it with 80 grit, followed by 180, and then this is a bit of 320, and so that's keyed beautifully. It's a flat very very finely scratched surface which means our um, flexible primer is going to stick beautifully there so got to finish underneath this only had the one crack which finished there and i've drilled that crack out and i've valleyed it uh, with a knife just placky so it's fairly soft filled up with filler just got to finesse that bit there but given that's behind the forks i don't reckon it matters anyway so that followed by the side guard we've got to do a bit more work finessing some of the filler there that flexi filler sounds beautifully and then we're ready to paint this I want to have the plastics, all the plastic work, or plastic wear, ready to paint the same time as the tank so I can do it all, I can shoot all the colour at the same time. Hmm, I like it. So I'm just roughing these things up with a bit of 120, clean them off and etch them. And I think we'll have to do about four of them. There'll be um, the straight silver, the silver glitter, the coloured glitter, and then one with both. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the clear in a couple of vats or jars and keep them separate so that if we do strike the right recipe then I can keep it for the guards and the side covers. Hang on, that's too much pressure. There's probably crap all over these, but what do you do? That'll do it. Still battling this little thing. Um, just found a couple of really, really small, just tiny little imperfections. I reckon I've got it now, so I'm just going to look over that with a bit more um, primer. The other side I reckon I've got, that ridge there I got rid of, I reckon I might be right. I'll just see how it looks in one colour again. And with any luck we can uh, stick some black down. Right, so here's the back of the XC door where we've welded all that metal into and you can see it was rough so I've had to refill sort of certain areas of it and I've just got to go and rub that back I haven't sort of finished rubbing it back yet but it needs to be smooth now this is really good because I can put a grey primer on and I can see straight away any problems and that's a problem for the motorcycle and I'll show you why the reason the, the primer is a problem is the primer that goes on these plastic parts is clear it's a binding agent if you like between the plastic and the top coat the issue is, you can't see one colour, so imperfections aren't going to show through until we hit it with the top coat. Now, the process for doing this is as follows. Today, we need to plastic prime these parts here. The two guards, the side covers and the headlight bucket. After that's done, we need to do black on the swatches and also the fuel tank of the bike. We also need to do this black as well. Then, of course, after that's done, we need to do the silver on the side covers and the guards and then tape off the tank and do the silver component of that. And then, of course, comes your high sheen or the glittery component that goes in the first coat of clear. After that, of course, we give it a subsequent two coats of clear to lock all that in, and then we're good to go. Now, the guard itself, the red one at the top there, this was rattle canned. Oh, I've kicked the thing. This was rattle canned with cheap red jam, like enamel. And I got it off. Pig of a thing to get off. But I reckon we're good, and that does feel smooth. So I'm hoping... That is all good. Prep washed all these. I should wear gloves, but the problem with gloves is they leave a um, they leave a residue. Now the instructions say oops, a light, two light coats, 
Which is why I've just done a really heavy one. Clear the corner. That's the back of it. And so far it doesn't look too bad when I can see in the reflection, but then I can't see much because I was a bit scratched in where the forks go. So I don't care about that either because you can't see it. So I'll just let that go off and we'll give it another hit and see what happens. I've got this jar here. I'm going to do something a bit dodgy. Get my texture out. I'm just going to make a mark. Right. Hang on. And then there. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add primer to there and flex aid to there. And then the rest we'll do in filler. Flex aids between 5 and 10% of the product. So that's 5 centimetres. 10% of that is half a centimetre or 5 millimetres. And to verify, yeah, my marks are pretty much on the money. So I'm just going to get the kit now. And when we had flex aid, we used it to the unthinned product. Of course, we got this little thing here. So we don't make a mess. I'm just going to put some in this jar. Using a food jar for painting, dumb idea, by the way. Yeah, right on. We can just cut that off until we're finished. This is the FlexAid. This is a two-pack product, which I didn't remember about, actually. And it just looks like gelatin, if you can see in there. And I'm just going to add a bit. It's really sticky and it stays sticky. And you've just got to be bloody careful with this because... That's it there. Because if you use too much, it won't go off. And if you use too little, it um, will still crack, paint will still crack. So now we've got that and we can start adding thinner to reduce it. So use a new stirring stick, stir it in, and there's no way we can put that through a gun. So we're gonna to have to reduce it somewhat. It's just as thick as original primer, but that doesn't matter because we're gonna some cheap me. And you're supposed to measure this stuff in, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it my way. Because I can. Even that might be a bit thick. It feels heavy. That's called a guesstimate. <laughs> you're, not supposed to get, you're not supposed to guess stuff like this, but... Whatever the case, I just did. So, if this goes belly up, well, whose fault is it? It's mine. Still a bit thick, so I added some other, a bit more thinner to it. Oh, that's better. Now, I need to get under here. Uh, kind of like that. And under my finger. Uh, I might do that later. Oh, I love doing this. It's therapeutic. So let's do a guided tour. <sighs> now you can't see imperfections in the plastic with just the clear because it's clear. So there are a few little bits and pieces in here. That looks like hair. Um, 
and also there where a rider has um, gouged into it. Some of you can feel it, some of you can't. <coughs> but there's a gouge here, but that's under the frame thing. It looks rough as guts, but we can sand that off. The this headlight bell looks pretty good. The front guard doesn't look bad either. And this is the bit you see at the top. A couple of fine scratches. I don't know if it's worth actually going after them or not. But anyway, look. Oh, I missed a bit there on the edge. I'll redo that. But at the end of the day, the edges are going to be where it starts peeling, I reckon. Well, the next thing I want to do is stick some black down on the tank. And I just don't want any chance of. Ooh, let me get this off. Primer coming out in the black. Now, sometimes, if you paint, like, throw down some primer, and you don't clean your gun properly, and then you put some black down, you'll find that it'll look alright until you go to colour sand it, and there'll be little specks all through it, and it will make you cry. There's going to be bits of paint up there. Eey, look at that. You know, bits of paint up there. So we need to take it apart to clean it out. The best product to use is gun wash. It's specifically made for this. We can use GP, GP thinners, not general practitioner doctors. And a lot of painters will look at this and say, mate, what are you doing? But let's face it, painters don't run out of their garages at home, do they? <laughs> I am dodging. Oh, okay. Um, so to clean it properly, we'd use a brush and all this, get it all nice. Uh, that's actually not that bad. I always run a lot of thinner through the gun when I'm finished. And of course we should pull, there's a gland in there, we should pull all that out. I'm just going to get in there with a brush and give it a good wash. Uh, right, so I've got a bit of acrylic black here. I was a bit worried I didn't have enough, but I think I have, so we're all good. Um, we've cleaned the gun, my son came in to talk to me, so I couldn't sort of show it. I was sort of doing it while he was talking to me. Clean that out, this is a 1.8 millimeter nozzle. What are my specs? This gun came with two different setups. You can see it's got the sort of air discharge thing there, here, and the um, seat for the needle there. That's a, what's this one? 1 1.6, I think it's two and a half, this one here. That's a huge nozzle. You'd use that for painting a ship or something. I don't know why you'd need something that big, but this gun came with those two, and I use a one point eight. That's a good all-rounder sort of size. Not just for primer. You could use a two and a half, I suppose, but you'd be getting rid of a whole lot of product, but for priming and for color, so. I'm just going to push that in a bit further so I don't release too much product and I think we're going to start shooting a bit of black now. Alright, let's shoot some black. Actually, I'll do these bits over here first. Oh dear. Nice light case to start with. I've got one guy on, not because of Michael Jackson, but because I just want to do light coats first on that headlight bell without getting too dirty. I've got work tomorrow. Okay. The first coat just looks a bit like a guide coat, only very light. That might be, I might have to reduce that a bit more actually. It's just the top that I'm really fussy about. Because that is where I've got to cut the stripe. Alright, let's have a look at that. God, I hate painting masks. Anyway, let's have a bit of a looky at this little bloke here. Um, the sides. Now it's not going to have, it's going to have silver on the side, so that black is very, very thin along the side. You can see it's a satin type of reflection in it, but I'm actually quite happy with that. 
and it is something that's worried me a lot. So that's a bit of acrylic black. The only thing we're going to see of that is of course the stripe and it's going to be cleared on top. So we can mask off and do the silver tomorrow. Um, you can see there's overspray underneath it. So I might paint underneath it silver. I might mask off the top and paint underneath it silver. But that's looking pretty good. You know, it's off the gun. It'll dry a little bit duller. Acrylic paint gets its sheen uh, mechanically. So you wet sand and buff. That would buff out to be mirror. Absolutely mirror. So it's not perfect. It's a bit peely, but it's quite thick along the top. So I'm reasonably happy with that. I'm very happy with that actually. It could be a lot worse than what it is. Uh, as far as these bits are concerned, um, headlight bell, it's a bit more satiny. See, it's dried off, it's a bit more satiny. Once we have a clear on top of that, it's going to look really, really good. And of course, we've got our samples there. That one's a bit sandy, but we won't worry because we've got to clear that as well. So, I think we'll just let that dry now. So here's a little spritz bottle we're going to be doing some wet sanding with. And I'm going to pop a bit of dishwashing liquid in. And I'm using Morning Fresh because it's morning. Well, it's not really. It's afternoon, but I just wanted to say that. Okay, so let's chat a little bit about some of the parts we've got here. Side cover's wonderful. I've given it a rough um, sand back. Well, not a rough sand back, but I've got that nice and smooth. Just passed over it a few times just to get rid of some of the high. This is primed with reflexate in it, so I'm wrapped with that. The back we could clean up a bit more, but where we're going to paint looks good. Of course, the rear guard's the same. One or two blemishes. There's one there and there's one there. This is all hidden under the seat. I'm not going to bother repairing those. I think that's going to be fine. Um, and the underside, of course, all good. So I'm very happy with this. Front guard is another one. Oh, absolutely lovely. We're a bit thin there with primer and a bit thin there. And also on the front. I'll just look over that. Not the whole thing, just the other spots that need doing. Of course, there's a little bit underneath as well, um, which I'm going to just lick over as well. Just a touch over it. This one I wasn't happy with. There were gouges still in it. Now, this is covered by sort of a, a satin black sticker. And even though there are a couple of gouges, I think if the sticker shrinks back over or shrinks into those gouges, I think they're going to throw light in a different way and it's going to become very, very visible. So I filled those as well. So I'm going to reprime. And this, of course, was where I think it had some interference with something, and there was a, it was undulated along there. So I think perhaps the best thing to do was to fill it, or I thought the best thing to do was fill it. And of course, we'll just go over that with a bit of this primer flex aid. Uh, the other thing we've got to look at is this really, really funky taillight ring. You can see I've covered that in filler now. This was all rusty. There's a little bit of surface rust on the inside, but it was pitted quite badly on the outside. And this is. Uh, normally a chrome um, bezel that goes around this beautiful little taillight. Um, now I've not seen another one from an XL like this and Dave and I are particularly fond of this. Um, it, it really does look fantastic. It's a lovely little retro lens. Um, sort of fits over there. This is a, oh, it goes that way. Um, I think this bezel sort of feeds in out from the back, if you know what I mean. I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, this is going to have to be, we can rub that back with, say, maybe 1,000 grit and buff it, make it look good again. If we catch it on the bath as we're doing it and it flies up across the room, that would be bad. <laughs> so we need to clean that up, solder some new wires on, of course. They were all cut and looked terrible. But we can really resurrect this and make it a worthwhile piece. It just means that this is going to need to be painted uh, rather than chrome. Um, even plating it would have come up badly and the reason I say that is because it's um, the, the surface is too undulated it wasn't smooth enough so I've used bog on it and of course when we take that back if I can find some suitable paper maybe this we can rub that out and make it nice and smooth um, and of course we don't want large amounts of filler in there We just need it nice and smooth. So I'll go through this, I'll rub that all out. Um, so it's nice and thin and nice and smooth. And of course, then I can prime this as well. Um, so we'll paint that, I don't know, maybe silver with a bit of glitter in it or black. Maybe black would look better. I don't know. I haven't even thought of it. It's 
one of those things that we'll just suck it in the sea, I guess. Flex eight again, and um, just actually I'm doing it for this side so you can see what I'm doing, and I just hope because I'm right-handed I'm going to bugger it up. That should be enough, maybe a tiny bit more. There we go, stirring them up, add thinners, and I reckon we'll start shooting those plastics. I'm just giving it a quick single coat. And I'll give it another one in a minute. Beautiful. Oh hey, yeah, it's very good. But I've just wrecked my shirt, so wifey's gonna freaking kill me. Right, I've got our plastics done. That's the rear guard. You can see the Flexade does put a bit of sheen on it. So when we put our clear on, that would be quite shiny. I just don't want to go too thick in case it cracks because we've done underneath it as well. Side covers, a um, little bit of a blotch there, but see, that's all covered up, so I don't care about that. It's really just the edges sort of around these areas that we see. So that's all done. I'm very, very happy with that. Didn't like the silver, and so I pulled it down a couple of shades. And I reckon that's got a beautiful sort of bluish machinery look about it, which is great for a retro bike. Uh, front guard, didn't paint it on top of the Plymouth here. It's just hanging here. Um, a couple of battle scars are still visible, but look, it's the best I could do, really. I don't want to go too far into it, and of course, we've done all underneath as well. So the plastics are done. Um, here are our swatches, and these just have bare silver on them. The light's terrible. I'm under a sort of a warm LED light, if you know what I mean. Um, of course, what we'll do now, or tomorrow, I will clear that, and on these ones, we'll start fiddling with the glitter. And seeing what we can come up with in terms of a final coating for the bike. Think about these tank stripes, and we've got to get them right now. I've had a couple of shots, and I got it nearly there, but I wasn't quite right. Um, now, what we've done, what I've done, I've got a little bit of white. I've found the centre line. That's kind of centre, I think. <laughs> got a bit of wire and started off at the same spot down here on either side. I found this line here. That's one that's sort of pressed into the tank and it's corresponding other one and the same on this side and I've cut them shorter there so I can run the stripe between them now by doing this finding the center I can find I've me taken measurements between each one to, to make sure they're accurate um, so when I stick the other stripe in the, per the permanent one for masking I'm going to come down through here because that's where it is on the original tank of course the original tank is there so I can have that next to it and have a look. Now, even that one, if you really look at it, doesn't look perfect. It's a really, really complicated thing to do. You've got loads of curves that you're contending with. Of course, got the natural fall in the tank, which goes this way. We've got curves going this way. Then we've got sort of concave and convex curves. And then, of course, it comes down here. And there are different pressings. So to run a, a pinstripe along a door in a car... It's a matter of finding the start point, looking along it, you know when you've got it straight. This thing's horrendous. It's actually really, really difficult to do. So I think now, once now that I've got that, I'm in better I'm in a better position to lay out the other ones in a more accurate light. So I think we'll try and do that now. Right, so now I've got my lines marked out, I'm just gonna drag this tape out. And I've got to try and maintain the same distance as there. which is difficult on the angle I'm on. So it's gonna wind up being something like that. Another way to verify it, while I drink my tea, you can see it's pulled tight there, which isn't good. But I want to make sure it looks the same there. And to do that, I've used just a piece of wire to go from the center line either side. There's no straight lines. There's nothing you can really take a measurement from. But now I've got that laid out. 
I can sort of just take random measurements. 12 mil. 12 mil. That's spot on. Oops, my stomach's making noises. That's sitting on 11 millimeters. 11 mil. We're good. And also take a measurement from sort of here to here as well. That's the stripe we're keeping. These are guidelines. So that's 20, 21 and a half mil. That's on 20. I oh know, 21. 20. That's 20. That's a bit less. Um, there is going to be a certain amount of error we can take up with the red stripe. This is the red stripe. It's going to eventually break the colour. Um, but I'm paranoid about getting it right. So we'll look at the other tank. I might be a bit wide there. So I might have to sort of cut it down and come in a bit closer to this one. Uh, we'll get the other tank out and have a look. I might be running too wide. I'm too wide. I've got to come in closer to here. To here. I've got to come in closer like that. And I'm only about an eighth of an inch off there, so that is cool. Experienced guys can just do this by sight, and sight is often better. But um, I can't. So we're looking, it's not on a good angle though. We're looking at the distance there. Now this tape here runs to the edge of the black. I'm going to run the tape over the join between the black and the silver. So I've got to get it right. This one, it's probably because it's dented, looks out. But I'm looking at that intermediate line. This one here and that one there. And I'm almost there. So I'm almost there. We notice that I've colour sanded but not completely. The reason I've colour sanded but not completely is because I want the tape to give a clean line. Right, which it's going to do. So we need to take this inner one off now. This stuff's great. This is about $9 a roll, this striping tape. And so then, after that we can... Um, well, I can't get it off from the bottom. We can mask this whole black section off and start throwing some silver down. So when we look at this, it should look right. Which it probably doesn't. But it's not my bike. <laughs> which one is it? Yeah, it's this one. <laughs> I've got to think. And we're left with what should be the right stripe. And I don't reckon that's too bad. I think it's all right. We've got a mask off in here because on the factory tank, that band there is silver and then it's silver on the sides there. I'm just going to make sure it's going to rag. It's dirty, but it doesn't matter. I want a clean line. This is probably masking paper. Um, I've always used just whatever's around. Like I've used newspaper. There's nothing wrong with that. You just got to be careful because newspaper will bleed if you're not careful. You get the paint too wet on top of it. The last thing you need to do is paint a white car and have a print set all over your car. <laughs> but I am. Um, I'm being ultra careful. This because it's not mine. You know what I mean? If it was mine, I'd probably fudge it a bit. But I had this masking paper anyway. And it's going to be fine for what I need. I might just run a longer piece down there. The chances of it getting through are negligible, but masking tape for a big roll, nice roll, that's two bucks, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to make sure that area, that line, is dead clean. We haven't got any orange going over the blue. The lighting in here is terrible, if you can see that, so that's all good. So that's start painting. I'm just going to wash off with a bit of wax and grease remover. Now, there are cars in the garage, I'm not taking them out, this is acrylic paint, so the deal is this, the paint's going to dry oh, a metre out of the gun and just fall to the ground. You can get away with that with acrylic, you couldn't even think about doing it with an air dry enamel or a two pack. We need to remove everything 
all together, but acrylic's really safe like that. Um, so just wash this off. And I think now is a great time to start shooting this colour. Now I need this colour to go off. It's a light coat for the first one. And we've got to watch that we don't um, get a... Get, we have to watch how we get a wet edge right. Because it, otherwise you can end up with a stripe, sort of a fuzzy stripe of metallic particulate in the centre. So we can stick down a fairly or a heavy coat next. And then afterwards we have to sort of dust it on to make sure that's all really random. But you'll notice the... Um, Silver covers the black beautifully. It looks absolutely gorgeous, this colour. It's actually the original silver. I added some black to it and I added some dark blue to it to give it sort of that... I think I mentioned before, sort of like a bluish machinery colour. I thought it looked good on an old bike. Oops, my glance came out, hang on. I always leave this nut on the gun in there, not too tight, so it releases easily. But every now and then it pops out. That looks beautiful, I love that colour. And I don't like silver much, but this is a nice one. I'm gonna let that go off now. Let's add a couple of little very fine cuts. See that gathering in the centre where the light is? I'll move the light now. We need to go random, but that is a stunning colour. I love it. Don't know how you'd match it because I made it up. I sound like Darth Pig and Vader wearing this. All right, let's have a look. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any missed spots. That's cool. That's going off nicely. And the unmasking bit is what they refer to as Christmas time. We just got to be careful with it. You need to unmask it before it goes off, just in case it grabs paint. So I'm just going to take some of the, some of this off. Just hope like crazy I've done my job. And the paint should be dry enough so it doesn't come off any hand off the paper, if you know what I mean. So it's dry on the paper, but not. Um, this going to be tricky, but not too dry if it, in that it grabs the tape and sort of, you know. That looks re reasonably satisfactory, although I don't like how I've done that bottom line, but the seat covers that. I wasn't aware that I went onto the bottom, I thought I was on the tank. I don't think that matters. <sighs> this is a good thing about having a crook fingernail, you can grab things with it. Can't do that with a normal fingernail. It's all buggered up, and I use it for doing this sort of thing. I'm reaching and grab stuff. Um, when I was 18 months old, 18 months old on a ship on the way back from England, I got caught in a watertight door and squished it. Anyway, that looks lovely. I'm pleased with that. Once that's cleared with a bit of glittery stuff, let's have a bit of a look. I'm happy with that. I love that colour. I reckon I aced that. I'll always admit when I get things wrong. But I reckon... I reckon we got that one right. Right, so I'm going to leave it there for this one. Uh, in the next one we'll start mucking around with the, uh, the glittery stuff and the clear and all that sort of business. Uh, really looking forward for some unknown reason for putting the rear guard together. So I've got this, um, this lovely powder coated brace. There's all sorts of powder coated stuff goes with this. And of course, after that, we can put this really, really off. This is dirty. We've got to recode this really funky old school tail light and put all that on. That's going to look really, really good. So, look, until next time, hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, drive safely, enjoy a classic, and I will see you later.